。哎 ，Hello。哎，哎，毕竟能听到我对吧？啊，那。好的，那我就共享屏幕了。嗯。可以，可以，可以。好，那先这样。嗯，好
sorry, I was on mute. Good morning or good afternoon or good evening, depending on where you are. We'll wait for a few more minutes. Um, there should be a few more people joining. I see the Alibaba team are are on. Are you um, going to be presenting the uh, Vineyard project? Oh, okay, thanks, Alex. Yeah, we, we are on. So shall we just uh, wait a few minutes or we just get started? Um, let's maybe wait a couple of minutes. Sure. A few more people should be should be joining us soon. Thank you. Okay. All right, it's it's nearly five past. Um, why don't we Why don't we begin? Hi, Aaron. Uh, hi, Alex. Okay, uh, let me get started. Share the screen first. Uh, can everyone see me? Yep. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Wen Yuan Yu, and uh, I am from the uh, Alibaba Demo Academy. And uh, today with me also, there are a few of my colleagues, Andy Tao and uh, Su Yuan online. Uh, uh, today I'm going to uh, present our recent work uh, called the One Yard. Uh, it is a distributed in-memory immutable data manager. And uh, uh, we have a plan to donate it to CNCF as a, a sandbox project. And we would like to hear more uh, from the community, especially from the SIG storage community uh, about the feedbacks on our project. Uh, feel free to interrupt if like you got any questions. Okay. Uh, the first question is why bother? Like uh, why we need uh, like the uh, like another uh, data storage engine? Uh, so the the problem is as follows. Uh, you can see uh, you can see from the uh, like PyData is a de facto standard for data analysis. Like uh, people like building various data applications in Python. 
And uh, normally, if like they, they may like involve multiple like uh, libraries or projects in the PyData ecosystems for different kinds of works. For example, we, if we want to do visualization, we use Matplotly. And we use to analyze uh, data frames, we use Pandas. And uh, if we want to do like uh, numerical calculations, we use NumPy. And uh, we want to do machine learning, we use PyTorch or TensorFlow. And uh, uh, all those libraries works together very nicely, okay? because sharing data, especially intermediate results, very uh, very efficient uh, between the systems or libraries. Uh, here is an example: like we want to pass uh, an array from NumPy to PyTorch. Okay, it's basically PyTorch understands the data structure of NumPy and uh, uh, understand it's all its metadata. And for like, uh, for the payload part, uh, like the actual like, uh, the actual array part, uh, it's it just share the same array, like with a pointer, like passing the pop, uh, C pointer and its length between those two libraries. It's very easy. And in this case, like you change a, like you change the tensor position uh, zero with to minus one, and for the ND array part in the on the numpy, uh, it also changed because it shared memory. So in this way, sharing data between those two libraries are basically with zero copy, zero actual copy, and it's like zero actual cost. Uh, but what if like we? For some reason, we cannot do the like the, we, we want to access the same piece of data, but uh, we cannot do them do do it on the same process, or we may need to do the multi-process processing uh, uh, on the same like data. It is not as easy as the first example. Like we can, but it's still possible with Plasma from the Apache Arrow. It's basically a local object store using shared memory. Uh, like it has a Python, also comes with a Python client. Uh, people can like, uh, like get an object. Uh, basically, that object's memory just mapped onto that process, and uh, use that ma ma memory. Like you can access the data, but for the like a metadata part, it's not as straightforward as the first one. Uh, because the, for the object store part, it's only like manage like continuous memory. For for each object, it requires everything like must store in a continuous memory, uh, a section of a continuous memory. Okay, uh, but uh, for the meta metadata part, you either you handle that yourself. Okay, you you got the metadata. You try try because metadata typically does not take much space. So you take the metadata data part, or you just serialize those metadata along with the payload part, the, the actual like payload part together and put that as a single object for Plasma, uh, just like what Apache Arrow does. Okay, that's the two ways you can solve the problem of sharing metadata. But, uh, you, can, but you can still share the, um, you can still share the payload part with zero copy with one plasma, just just between different processes or runtimes on a single machine. But then, like, if we want to handle like a even bigger application, like uh, we handle big data, the big data itself like cannot fit into a single machine, and uh, plus we want to like do many different tasks different workloads on the same piece of data or or like uh, on, on the result of the like uh, like different workloads what can we do like in this case we want like um, leverage kubernetes and also uh, the, the the project we, we were doing in one yard okay uh, let's look at it uh, in uh, real life big data application just like what we have done in Python, like uh, actual, the real life big data applications is actually very, very like complex. Uh, they are involving many different tasks. 
for example, we we from the raw data, raw logs, we may need to do some ETLs to do the drawings, to do the transformations. And then we can feed that data. We, want, we may want to feed that data to a graph system to do a community detection. For example, we do the label propagation. And, uh, and then we, we want to feed that data to a deep learning system like TensorFlow or PyTorch, like to, to find, to, we try to learn some patterns and learn something models. And finally, uh, we want to like use, uh, do some visualization on the, on the like uh, classification of the graphs and we, or something like that. We want to like do some inspection whether this, this classification makes sense. Okay. okay, if that's the pipeline, you see we, between, for each, each workload, there are some dedicated systems. And between the systems, we need to shuffle the data in a distributed file system. And uh, no more like zero copy sharing of data anymore, okay? Here's the observation. Uh, the, the, the big data application involves many systems and each system shares the uh, media data with uh, eternal file system. And finally, uh, this kind of the workload uh, often uh, organized as a chain or a deck. And uh, like each individual task requires the, uh, the results produced by the previous tasks. Here are the problem, okay? Because first, like if even for the big data, like uh, we have distributed file system, the building a production ready systems like Hive, TensorFlow, Spark, PyTorch, those are very hard to develop. Why? Because like we need to consider different kinds of different like distributed file systems. We may need to consider like uh, what's a file format, like we you do we use CSV for like tables or like orcs or 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 parquets? Like there are many, so many like uh, file formats. Not to mention for graphs, there's no standard way to store graph, right? So we need to dump them as a table, but uh, that table may lose lots of information and uh, very inefficient. And uh, like you need to coupled with this kinds of like input output and the systems. Second, sharing this data with external system of course involves huge IO costs. And sometimes those costs are unnecessary. And finally, like if we want to optimize those tasks as a whole, like we want to pipeline in this kind of things, and the jobs is very challenging. Uh, so that's the motivation. We want to build a system, like solve those problems. We want to make big data system easy to build. And we want to like reduce this kinds of IO costs in the workflows. And finally, we want to open the opportunity for like cross task optimizations. That's the quest for one yard. So what is one yard? Wired is a distributed in-memory object store for immutable data. And it supports zero copy in-memory data sharing between different systems. It comes with out of the box, high level data abstraction for developing big data applications. For example, we have uh, like tensors, we have data frames, we have distributed graphs, we, we, we have like scalars, uh, and also like common data structures like arrays, hash tables, etc. Like with those kind of data structures are just like uh, come out of the box, and those kind of data structures can be mapped to the memory, like just like native objects, like C plus plus object. You can use that data, like you could do the local data access just like a native uh, objects. And finally, we provide drivers for data partitioning, IO and checkpointing migration, et cetera. That means the, the big data applications that do not need to care of IO, like 
when the, the, the computing engine is started, the data is already there in one yard for, for its consumption. The computing engine itself does not need to care, okay, uh, do we need to, 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 to load the data from an external file system? All it's coming from another stream, all what's what happens whatsoever. So the one yard comes with the drivers that can do this kind of task for the like the application build on top. Here is the architecture of one yard. Uh, a one yard object consists of the beta payload. Payload is basically the, those consume much of the memory and the metadata. And the data payload store storing in the shared memory, just like a plasma did. Okay, well, we, we, we open a big chunk of shared memory as a pool for storing the payloads. And uh, the metadata in, in one yard is like synced through a cluster using ECCD. And uh, the, we currently we, we support data frames, graphs, tensors, et cetera, many kinds of. And the uh, one yard daemon instances access via IPC and RPC connections. And the data payload can be accessed by IPC connections. So RPC, so you can only access the uh, uh, metadata. For IPC, you can just map the shared memory into your process. And we have comes with many like flagpole drivers, which can provide certain functionalities to certain data formats. For example, migration or IO, load old data or unload the data, save data to an uh, external file system, et cetera. Here is <clears throat> could I could I just um ask a, a couple of clarifying questions there? Um, sure. Is is the is the data um uh, replicated across the different instances, or is it sharded, or 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 is it just separate data sets? Uh, currently, um. Um, it, it, actually, we, we are just sharding, sharding the data or partitioning the data is for, for, for the common, like big data applications. But uh, we also support replications. Like for example, uh, uh, like uh, I will come back, I'll come to that later. Like for example, when ah. we, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, that like, um, for example, that, for example, if the data is replicated, maybe we have two like, to processing process, like working on the same piece of data to speed up or, or for some, some reason, like we want to have a data backup in the memory or for some reason, we just, we just dump the data to an external file system and then we free that data from the memory as that's all can be controlled by uh, like something called a driver. And uh, we can build drivers to do that. And uh, the drivers can work with Kubernetes and uh, the like on the applications on top to decide that. So on the very low level, the data like we uh, on the uh, for the one yard does not care like uh, the literally it does not really understand the the the, the, the what does the data mean. But because we have metadata manager and the drivers, we can easily plug in new kinds of like data structures or types onto like one yard. So like uh, it's, yeah, yeah. Basically to, to make sense of the data is more like a client thing or the application thing, not the one yard D thing. It's a, just maintain the metadata. Do, do you have any right. concerns about uh, leveraging at CD at a certain scale due to its brittleness, using it to sync the data through the cluster? Have you run into uh, the, the, the performance? You mean, you mean the like performance consideration? Well, not only performance considerations, but just the additional traffic then that flows through etcd that isn't part of its normal functionality at scale. It seems like that would you could possibly run into issues there. Uh, yeah, we have done tests. Uh, currently, we deploy the etcd like uh, as a standalone cluster, a uh, standalone workload, uh, like. In addition to the, the ETCD required by Kubernetes, uh, mm -hmm. 
Uh, also, like uh, it's not a big problem because we only use etcd for like metadata, and only if that metadata is consumed, like by cross different kinds of application, we put that data to etcd. Otherwise, we maintain that data uh, as local as possible. Like if that data is not required by a remote worker. Uh, like that metadata or that object is re not required by the remote worker. We try not to like expose that. And our data is mostly like immutable. So uh, those kind of metadata are kind of static unless you're creating something new. So uh, that, that does not happen too like frequently. So that's not a problem like, uh, like for like too many, much traffic or something like that. Okay, thanks. Uh, here I, I will show an example for to access uh, like global data frame in one, one yard. That means like we have a data frame big table and we partitioned the table onto, into many chunks. And for like uh, and each chunk may locate in one of the one yard instance. And like we have a client on one, like on top of one worker. If we first we connect one yard through a domain socket, and then we like uh, try to get an object of uh, some specific ID, we can get all the chunks from that data frames, and uh, and we can access we can we can access a chunk like a local chunk. We can check whether the chunk is local or not, and we can get a local chunk, and then we can, like, just use the chunk like normal, like pandas chunk, and uh, we can do, uh, we can inspect the metadata of that. So, and the, each step involves different components, and basically, if the chunk is local, you can use the chunk just like a normal native object. And uh, currently we have some integration with the Kubernetes and uh, we have a vision that like with one year support and the ability of Kubernetes, we can make, may, maybe we can um, find a new, build a new uh, cloud native paradigm for big data tasks. Like uh, first we will cover how to deploy one year in Kubernetes and uh, how we leverage the power of Kubernetes and uh, further ahead, how to how we use uh, like Kubernetes ability to co-schedule data and the workloads on top of it. Um, like just just flashback to the previous task we want to solve, like uh, like. Uh, we want to like uh, replace first. We replace the distributed file system with one yard, okay? And then we 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 we, uh, um, we want the different kinds of workload to share the data uh, through the means of CRDs. So they 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 find the CRDs they want to access, and uh, we use the one yard to map the data to its workers, and. Uh, uh, for example, we change the, the, the workload as this. We use a data frame engine called Mars. It's already integrated, has, has, has integration with Vineyard, and uh, it's built, in, uh, built by Alibaba as well. And the uh, uh, grass system called Grasco is also like built on top of Vineyard. And uh, those kind of thing can be directly like, shared. The data can be directly shared through the CRDs. And then we, we use Kuba flow and uh, the, the graph and we can still use the, the one yard to share because it talks in tens, talks in the language of ND arrays, the chunks of ND arrays and we have uh, a Python SDK to easily like, a Python SDK to easily integrate any like Python based like uh, libraries. And in this way, the end-to-end -end big data task is deployed on Kubernetes and the intermediate results like data uh, abstracted as CRDs and lived in one yard and in the memory. And uh, maybe we can have a scheduler 
to optimize the locality of the next job. And if the, the job, there are some mismatch, we can uh, also schedule or we initiate a, an, another job uh, to migrate the data for the alignment or we repartition the data for the alignment. Uh, I was I was I was just thinking that that would be an ideal candidate for a custom controller or or a mutating controller or something potentially. Uh, yes, indeed. So so uh, uh, first we we uh, how to deploy Vyond on Kubernetes. Actually, it's a little bit like uh, uh, not not very straightforward because. Vanyard requires IPC communication between Vanyard server pods and the application pod for memory sharing. Currently, we deploy Vanyard as a daemon set. Okay, so, so in this way, we need to like either uh, using a host path for an IPC socket, uh, the, the domain socket, or we need to uh, build a separate persist volume claim for like just, just to put a socket there, and to, and we have done the experiments. It's it works, and uh, as long as we can have a domain socket mapped to different containers, we can share the memory in one yard, and the users can bundle one yard and the workload to the same pod, and the domain socket can be shared with the MTDIR. And for deployment of one yard, we we uh, yes, just I just said it could be deployed as a daemon set. And uh, they have a uh, you leverage the help for like to install one yard quickly install and deploy uh, on Kubernetes. And uh, secondly, we all one yard objects we expose it as uh, Kubernetes resources. Like basically, if some job requires some kinds of data, that's 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 in the means of one yard objects. It can look up through the Kubernetes CRDs, and uh, um, yeah, that's that's well, just and uh, and the further we have plans in progress, like to build a like one yard operator that that be responsible for the DevOps of the one yard of on your own Kubernetes cluster. And we want to it to be responsible for managing the status of Vanyard cluster and managing the CRDs and provide the skill in and out capability of Vanyard on Kubernetes and to be responsible for like, if we want some kind of data checkpointing, we want some recovery for tolerance, et cetera, we can use a Vanyard operator. Uh, further ahead, we plan to like leverage the scheduler plugin functionality of uh, Kubernetes, and then we want like use Kubernetes to aspirate the data, like how the data is partitioned, or how the data is migrated, how the data is replicated, how the data finds the workload, and how the workload finds the data. Like we. First, the, the worker pod describes the required one yard objects in their specs and schedule tries to align the worker pods with required one yard objects by retrieving the location spec from the CRDs. But if the, the data is misaligned and the, we can trigger a data migration or repartition to ensure that the pods can access data they require. Uh, here is an, is an example. Like first we have a job, let's generate the part data part one and the data part two on the one yard instance V1 and V2. And uh, it's it's a part one and part two and they come they, they together they uh, maybe they uh, they are part of a global graph, some graph global graph and uh, for the next job, we have opportunity to like uh, co-locate. Maybe we may may want to like put P2 and uh, those P2 together, uh, like on the P1 part one and part two. But if not, if it's not possible, we can like trigger a migration, like to to satisfy the, the 
the requirements. And uh, then the job is launched, the data is there and uh, can be directly mapped to their, uh, to, to their process. Here is hey, the- Sorry, yeah. just a couple of questions there. Mm -hmm. um, the data migration, that would be happening sort of shared memory to shared memory. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's it's kind of by a driver. Actually, driver is a special client, a special client that lives in the Vineyard container. Uh, uh, so basically, it's in a separate process of the Vineyard daemon, but in the same container. It's just like, okay, like for each node, there's like Vineyard container, and there will be also a driver. We, we send it. Uh, command, so you need to migrate this object to this object, to this like instance. It just create a new object here and maybe remove here, or we just keep it here. It's, it depends on the, what command it was given. So uh, it's basically like the drivers, it's, they're doing very primitive jobs. Like it's a special client or special application. Like, but uh, it can provide like um, some some like for example, we want to check pointing is that we, we want to save the data a copy of data to to the disk. We just like dump the data to the disk, and then we can move on. Yeah, that's 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 basically the the meaning. I feel re 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 yeah, and the, for the roadmap. Really interesting. Just just one 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 other small comment. Um, we had a, a project present um, a few, a couple of months back called the Dataset Lifecycle Manager. Mm -hmm. um, it was it was an IBM project which um, had at least in, not the shared memory aspect, but it, but it, it 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 had put together a process where you could have CRDs that would identify um data sets and load them onto particular nodes um specifically for sort of um research and 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 potentially big data type use cases so so i'm i'm, I'm kind of wondering if if maybe there is yeah yeah um, i think that's a good good idea actually we don't currently have uh, like bandwidth to like to to go in very deep on the scheduling part. Actually, actually there's too too much work to do. Actually, uh, I, I'm just thinking just the model of one yard very fits this kind of uh, the the ability provided by other CNCF projects. And the, actually, we are currently looking at another project called Fluid, uh, like to. Uh, kind of achieving the similar things, but I will definitely also look at the data set project. Uh, but I didn't pay attention to the previous meeting, so we will definitely check. Thank you very much. Very cool. And uh, for the roadmap, and uh, currently we have like uh, everything build, testing, we did that through the GitHub Actions. Uh, we have the various data types supported already, for example, arrays, uh, graphs, and uh, the data frames, et cetera. And uh, we support several like computation engines, PyTorch, Mars, GraphScope, uh, except for PyTorch, those two are from Alibaba. And then we release as a Docker image on Docker Hub and the Quay, and uh, we have integrated with Helm for the deployment. The further ahead, we plan for we have plan for the op, Vineyard operators, and uh, uh, we 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 aim to further improve its performance either by those like those data types and uh, also also by the like uh, the basic primitive operations on Vineyard such as create object or remove object etc. And uh, also we plan to add more uh, language support such as Java, Go, et cetera, um, and the Rust maybe. And uh, we, we, we may want to look into how to build the storage hierarchy such as for like objects on memories in some device, for example, GPU, also the external uh, storage like local SSD, something like that, whether we can leverage that. And uh, we want to 
uh, either build a scheduler plugin or like we can integrate with other like scheduler framework that can handle the data locality problem. Uh, the status of the project currently is hosted uh, on the GitHub to Alibaba org and it got uh, 343 stars as of uh, yesterday and uh, we got uh, 33 issues <laughs> and uh, 113 pull PRs. And we have six maintainers currently all came come from Alibaba. And uh, uh, and uh, but we 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 welcome any contribution from the community, and uh, we have a clear path for newcomer to become maintainers. Uh, currently, it's up to two point zero license, and uh, we have either issues, discussions, PRs are welcome, and we have website to host uh, the documents. Uh, for the community governance, uh, we have a clear path for newcomers to become maintainer. Uh, we have designed many like good first issues, like uh, open many good first issues for newcomers. And uh, before becoming a maintainer, we expect that the newcomer can submit five, like at least five PRs uh, to one yard, and uh, he can reach one of the existing maintainer, and uh, we. We will happy to like uh, have a vote, and uh, a majority is required. And it's just the uh, the routine stuff. And uh, we we very welcome the external maintainers and the contributors actually. And uh, we know by building one yard, it's like uh, actually we it's not uh, one. Uh, the, the effort for like from one team or like just one vendor is not enough and uh, the community is the key. So we really welcome the as the maintainers contributors. And uh, this that maintainer could uh, like spend like uh, at least one fifth of his time on, on the project. Okay. And um, the enhancement decisions like is this, uh, like propose the, as the issues, uh, and uh, we can have a vote uh, by maintainers. And for develop it, to develop it, you can feel free to self-assign or a maintainer will assign. And the release cycle, we will follow the same way to cut release packages. Uh, like for one year, a major re release, and every two months, we have a minor release and the patch version every one or two weekends. And uh, we plan to distribute our first major release um, in April. And uh, we have already released the packages in like PyPy views, Docker images, and the helm charts. Oh, well, sorry, the, 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 the wrong place for question mark. Uh, YCNCF, right. uh, yeah. Uh, actually, oh, MyYard is a very a natural fit to cloud native computing. Uh, like it provides efficient distributed uh, data sharing and in a cloud native environment. And uh, it all can be auscurated by Kubernetes. And we, we find that is really exciting. Uh, and uh, we already leveraging existing abilities provided by many of CNCF projects. Currently it's Kubernetes native uh, scaling out. It comes with a scheduler plugin, and uh, we use Helm for de deployment as a cluster. Uh, and uh, we use etcd and the CRDs from Kubernetes for the metadata management. And uh, and we really want to uh, make this like IP vendor neutral to encourage collaboration and innovation. Actually, uh, it's it's kind of a uh, a foundation of like building like new big data system or is it all making the existing system better? So I, I think that that's like uh, something we want. And the possibility we want can get feedback and contribution from the end user community that CNCF can engage. And uh, we want to work with the CNCF community and we believe together we can build the next generation cloud native paradigm for big data applications. 
uh, that's all for my presentation. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you so much. This was this was a really good presentation. Um, are there are there any questions from anybody on the call? Perhaps Luis or or, or Zheng? No, I uh, I think this is great. I I learned a lot actually from it. And uh, one of the things I look forward to is maybe a demo of it. Uh, uh, that would be great. I, I I can see the architecture. I I would like to see how it kind of uh, yeah yeah you know, actually it gets we, used. So yeah, maybe 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 we can do it in the next meeting if you guys uh, interested right. because we were like for many like uh, Kubernetes work, especially the scheduler part. Uh, we were just doing some like a very like early POC version, like proof concept versions, and uh, mm -hmm. we can haven't get everything uh, linked together. So uh, maybe in next meeting we can do a demo. Let's see you know, what's the how the same rule and the yeah. Um, other than that, um, you know. I guess we just have to go through the, you know, the due diligence that you know we have to go through the project and check it out. Mm -hmm. But I, I am, um, you know, quite impressed with what you showed. So, okay, thank you. Especially all the memory things. Yeah. So. Okay. Thanks. Thank you for liking. And <laughs> and, and just uh, just to to double check. So, uh, are you applying? Uh, are you planning to apply for sandbox or for incubation level? Uh, actually, I want to like hear from you guys said well. Uh, our plan is for the sandbox. It's, yeah. uh, I think it's easier. And uh, uh, our so project fair. only open source a few months ago uh, on like uh, October or November. I can't remember. It's 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 pretty new and we only got maintainers from the Alibaba and, uh, and we really want to get more like external maintainers uh, like before we can move to the next level. I think that's, that's our plan. But uh, but yeah, uh, the incubator, it's, no, we, 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 it's, it's, we are happy. <laughs> but uh, we just, uh, for, just uh, we are not ready with that. Yeah, I think the sandbox yeah. is correct. You need to have right. like end users, right? Alex, I believe. Uh, I think they looks like right yeah. now they don't have that yet. Uh, for yeah, end users, right. that's we it. have Alibaba, of course, but uh, yeah, we, we need to. Uh, yeah, other end, <laughs> not yourself, other end users. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I understand. Yeah, so basically, so uh, we have uh, many, uh, we have two other open source projects like Build on Top, one are already open sourced by Alibaba and they got many, uh, they got a few uh, in the users. I'm, I'm not sure whether like that counts as our in the users as well. Mm. Uh, I but, think, yeah. But we just want to improve it. It's that not, yeah, it's not enough yet. Mm. Yeah, it looks pretty decent for sandbox project. Yeah, yes, for I agree. It may not be enough, yeah. I'm just concerned, I, I, actually, too. I, I agree. On the amount of time the Sandbox project has a lifetime, is there a, a limit? Because I'm this project seems good, but I'm just concerned that it may not uh, collect enough uh, end users or or other community members. Is there a lifetime for Sandbox, uh, or do we wait until maybe the team has more uh, contributors? Well, uh, I, I, I think I think. I think the project is is just at the right at the right stage okay. because okay. Um, you know you're 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 close to the to the one .0 release um, and you know using sandbox to um, increase the number of maintainers and to build out the community is 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 perfect. Um, the you know the once you're once you're in sandbox there are there are reviews every six months or so. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't. I don't anticipate that that's that that's going to be a problem. You, you know, you can then make okay. the decision to to move to incubation once once you're ready. Okay, thank you. Perfect. 
Good to know. Yeah, I think Sandbox is correct. Brilliant. Okay. Um, one thing I will do is I will um, I will share the recording of um, of the presentation and and the the deck with um, with the TOC at the next call, so that they'll have um, they'll have uh, some background of the project before they uh, they they go into the the next uh, sandbox review and, and and voting because the the, the TOC have a have a regular um, uh, a regular schedule now where they where they do they review all of the sandbox um, uh, applications in, in in one go every month or every two months. Um, I need I need to double check when the next review is, but I'll I'll, I'll find out and, and let you know as well. Okay, okay, thank you very much, Alex. Thank you. Yeah, uh, if there's anything more like we uh, we can provide or uh, make it like more solid, uh, just let us know. Sounds Thanks, good. Guys. Any other questions or, or, or comments for the team? All right. I think we're good. Um, we we also had um, we also had uh, another item on the agenda to to um, continue to review the DR documents that uh, that Rafaela had shared out um, last time, but uh, unfortunately uh, Rafaela had to had to drop off. Something came up, um, so he had to drop off at about half past. So. Um, if uh, I, I would strongly encourage if, if you have comments or, or any other content to feed back to that uh, DR document to, to apply it to the document itself. Um, and we'll, we'll go through and review the comments uh, in the next uh, SIG meeting. Okay, I'll make sure I review it. Cool, thanks Luis. It, it's, it's a really good document that's coming along nicely. Um, does uh, does anybody else have have any other items they want to to raise or discuss? No. Okay. So we get twelve minutes back. Thanks, everyone. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks. Bye. -bye. Thanks. Thanks.